Welcome, welcome to another session of Everyday Mathematics. Here at Everyday Mathematics, as we always say, we do enjoy solving the harder problems. Uh, but above all, we also see and appreciate the beauty in the simpler problems. So today uh, we move from uh, part one to part two on the floor ceiling function uh, series of the MIT 2022 Integration B uh, quarterfinals. And uh, today's problem is really intricate, uh, even from just uh, the visuals. So looking at uh, today's problem, it is the integral of uh, the ceiling function of one over the ceiling function of x minus x uh, to the power negative ceiling function of x from x equals to zero to x equals to infinity. So uh, before I jump on to the solution, I'd like to uh, really thank our subscribers. We thank you for uh, the support. We thank you for co the continued interest. Uh, we are seeing uh, just uh, incredible numbers in terms of uh, the views uh, and also the comments that you leave behind. Uh, for our first time visitors, we really encourage you to subscribe to our channel. Um, we will promise you that we'll keep uh, feeding you with uh, very interesting solutions to very interesting problems. Uh, for visitors who are here for the second, third or fourth or fifth time, but I haven't gotten uh, that uh, extra, extra motivation to subscribe to our channel, we can only say we will use your support and uh, you won't regret. Um, thank you so much. So let's uh, quickly jump into the solution. Um, so this problem is obviously a nested problem of uh, ceiling functions. And what is a ceiling function? A ceiling function, uh, if taken in between, when x is between k and k plus one, that means that the ceiling function is going to be a constant. Uh, ceiling function of x is going to be just k plus one. Um, and so um, what that means for our problem is that uh, this ceiling function of one over uh, x minus x to the power negative uh, ceiling function of x is just a summation uh, of uh, strips. So we have the strip when x is between k and k plus one, when x is between k plus one and k plus two, or k minus one to k. So we have those strips and we see here that we have infinite number of uh, strips from k equals to zero, these integer intervals up to infinity, uh, such that uh, for every strip we are integrating, obviously from k to k plus one, uh, one over, uh, in place of uh, ceiling function of x, we have k plus one. Um, and since this there's a negative here, so uh, that's a matter of just getting the reciprocal of this number here, which is now one over um, ceiling function of one over k plus one minus x to the power k plus one. Since we still have an x component here and still a ceiling function here, we have to keep working. Uh, this um, content, the content of the ceiling function here is uh, also discrete. And so it, it's when we consider this content to be between, that is one over k plus one minus x to be between uh, another integer interval L and L plus one, um, what happens there is that this ceiling function equals to L plus one. That is uh, the integer above um, uh, the number between, the real number between uh, this interval. Now, um, what that means is that um, we have to figure out a, what interval X must lie in between so that uh, this expression is between this integer interval. So we have to take the, res the, the reciprocal uh, of this bounds. So that means that k plus one minus x must be between one over l plus one and 
1 over L. And since we are um, taking the inverse, so we have to swap uh, this uh, inequality sign, which means now if we apply a negative sign again, we swap them since we know the negative values, the absolute higher value is less than the absolute lower value. So we just swap around. And then now we add k plus one to both sides. Now k plus one minus one over l less than x, or and x uh, less than k plus one minus one over l plus one. In this interval is when uh, this expression holds. So what that means is that our integration since we had created a discretization uh, interval here, uh, under this integral sign, we also still have um, the indexing of L uh, taken into consideration. So we have a nested sum summation here, uh, that is for L equals to one to infinity of the integral in that of K plus, one minus one over L to K plus one, uh, one minus L over one, one over L plus one. And so uh, whatever is inside this uh, ceiling function now becomes L plus one as we had indicated here. And that is now L plus one, the denominator, the power K plus one. And since um, there is no X here, so this is just taken to be a constant in this interval, and so the difference, let's continue with the integration. Uh, the integration now is, results into uh, obviously X with the limits being K plus one minus one over L, K plus one minus one over L plus one. So the difference of those limits, since we are looking at just a, a, an X there, um, taken into consideration. And so uh, we have a summation from k equals to zero to infinity. Inside that we have summation of L is equals to one to infinity or one over L plus one to the power k plus one over one over L minus one over L plus one. So that is our uh, sum, we multiply that through, we get that our nested summation here is of one over L times L plus one to the power K plus one minus one over L plus one to the power K plus two. So this is the same as when L is equals to one, this is obviously one here, and then this is two, the power K plus one minus two to the power K plus two plus when L is equal to two is two times three to the power K plus one minus one over three plus K plus two, K to the power K plus two plus when L is equal to three, three times into times four to the power K plus one minus one over four plus K plus two. Okay. Then um, considering the K summation, so for every um, bracket sign here we have one over two and k is equals to zero, one over two minus one over two squared uh, plus one over two squared minus one over two to the power three. This is when k is equals to, to one and, and so on. And now we realize that here is two, one to the power uh, two squared and the next term this cancels out and this process continues. So at the end of the day, you're only left with a half. For when um, L is equals to two, now here we have two to the power times one over two to times three, when K is equals to zero minus three squared uh, plus one over two times three squared minus one over three to the power three. This is when K is equals to one and so on and so on. Um, and as we can see, this interacts with this. Uh, so we have positive one over two times three squared minus one over 
uh, three squared, this just becomes negative a half uh, of one over times one over three squared. And that continues. Uh, we'll look at how that will be treated later. So the same thing here when L is equals to um, two. So one over three times four, this is when K is equals to zero, minus one over four squared plus one over three to the power of one over three times four to the power squared minus one um, over four to the power three. And here now we see this interacts with this. So one over positive one over three times four squared minus one over four squared. That means that the difference here will be negative two over three. Okay. And so we continue on and on and on. Now, uh, the result here is interesting. So we have uh, for the first term, we have only half left. For the second term, we have one over two times three minus one over two times three squared plus one over two times three to the power three and so on and so on. Here for the third term, one over three times four minus uh, two over three times four squared plus two over three times four cubed plus on and on and on. And then plus one over four times five minus three over four times five squared plus three times four to the power five to the power three and plus uh, on and on to infinity. So uh, here we see that a half can be pulled out and now we have a summation of a geometrical progression of uh, initial term one over three squared but the common ratio is one over three. So we have one over three squared minus, uh, divided by one minus a third. The second one, we have one over three uh, times four minus, we pull two over three out. And then we have a geometrical series where one over four squared is the initial term and one over four is the common ratio. And this series goes to infinity. So we have one over four squared over one minus, uh, quarter inside that this bracket and so on and so on and so on. So the next obviously term, uh, one over five uh, squared is uh, the initial term and one over five is the common uh, ratio. And the next one, one over six squared is the initial term and one over six is the common ratio. Um, so taking that into consideration, uh, what we left here is one over two times three minus one over two. Here you get one over six plus one over three times four minus mm -hmm. we pull two over three out. We have one over 12 in the bracket. One over four times five, we pull uh, minus uh, three quarters out and one over 20 is in bracket. One over five times six minus four over five into bracket one over 30. Now you compute that, we get uh, a half, if we pull a half out, we have a third minus a six. We have a third pulled out, we have a quarter minus a six. We have a quarter pulled out, we have one over five minus uh, three over 20. We have a fifth pull out, we have one over five times one over six minus four over 30. And then um, we have now a half plus a half. Uh, the difference here is one over six. And then a third, the difference here is one over 12. The difference here here is one over 20. The difference here is one over 30. And then you see the constant a half, a third, a fourth, a fifth. So now we can also express it differently. Uh, this is same as one over one squared times a half. This is when we pull a half out, we're left with a third. So we have a half, one over uh, two squared times a third. When we pull another a third out here so that we have one over three squared, we're left with a quarter. So one over three squared times a quarter. And then the same thing, one over four squared times um, fifth plus one over five squared times uh, sixth. So we can express that uh, in a generalized series format. Uh, this is the same as uh, the summation of K is equals to one to infinity or the squared part is k, k squared times k plus one. For example, for one squared and two, this k squared, and then a one plus one is two, and this is how we've created that. You can simplify that further by 
uh, pulling one over k out and then having one over uh, k times k plus one such that when you use partial fractions, you have one over k times one over k minus one over k plus one, multiply one over k. Of course, we have one over k squared minus one over k plus one. And so we have one over k squared minus, again, in this bracket here, we have one over k minus uh, one over k plus one. So we're going to, since we have this expression, we can use what we call the Bezel problem. The Bezel problem tells us that if you have a summation of um, one over k squared from k equals to one to infinity, uh, that summation is equals to pi squared over six. This is a well-known uh, problem. You can go online and, and check uh, the different derivations that are out there. Uh, but it, this is what somebody uh, who has some in-depth knowledge of algebra uh, or um, a series should, should know. This is one of the really popular series. So we see that this first term here can uh, decompose or can uh, be uh, proxy, more abbreviated to pi over squared, pi squared over six minus, and then the second term we have one over one uh, when k is equals to one, one over two minus one over two, and then when k is equals to two is one over two minus one over three, when k is equals to three we have one over three minus a quarter, and so on and so on. And but we see that this is a telescoping series because. This part here cancels with this, and this part mm -hmm. cancels with this, and that continues onwards, and we're left with only the initial term, which is one. So the final um, answer here is pi squared over six minus one is the answer for the very complicated integral of um, ceiling function one over ceiling function of x minus x to the power negative ceiling function of x uh, from x equals to zero to infinity. So this is actually a very beautiful problem. I hope you are able to follow. If you have any questions, uh, please uh, feel free to leave uh, those questions in the comment below. Uh, but it was an absolute pleasure um, solving this problem. Um, and really, if you haven't subscribed to our channel, we do encourage you to subscribe to our channel. Thank you so much. Until next time, à tout à l'heure, à la prochaine fois.